I'm not going to really say anything nice about Joe because I can't think of any, but <laughs> <laughs> the one thing he was, and it was true, he was a mess sergeant. And when he went into the service, the first meal he was asked to prepare, being of Italian background, was uh, spaghetti and meatballs. Well, I understand that one of the meatballs fell off the table and you know, we had combat boots. It dented one of the combat boots. <laughs> and he immediately called my mother. He says, how do you make those damn things? <laughs> so, uh, and, and that's a true story. What's he watching? What's he watching on TV? What's his story? The only story. Always, always took command of the, any situation. They were down at Greenleaf golfing, and after they'd finished nine holes, they had to go in and have 25 minutes for lunch and get back on number 10 tee. While they're there and the uh, waitress is trying to take their order, smoke is coming out of the kitchen. The chef throws open the door, and he says, uh, we, have a, we have a grease fire in the kitchen, but don't anyone leave. Go ahead and order, and we'll get the smoke cleared out as soon as possible. Joe turned to the waitress and he said, in that case, he said, I think we better have some smoke to ham. <laughs> That's Joe Caprino. <laughs> That's good. How long have you known Joe? I've known Joe for 40 years or better. Yeah. Uh, played a lot of golf with Joe, bought a lot of merchandise from Joe. You know, I've done it all. Joe, was, he's all, whenever we, uh, we had affairs where we needed fundraisers or help or assistance, Joe may not have been on the committee, but he was always there for the help, you know. So he's a very special kind of a guy. But Joe's like a brother to me. We, he was brought up in our family as a, I think Al told you, he was brought up as one of the boys. When his parents came, or when he came over to this country, he grew up with us and he went into service with us. And uh, then he went into service, he got back and he got married. So he's. All his life he spent with the United with with us at our home as one of the boys. He ate what we did and he slept like we did, three to a bed. <laughs> so uh, it's a long way, but he's done it and he's done it through hard work. And I don't think you're ever going to find a person that's more generous and more open-hearted than Joe. He's he's had his adversities and he understands what it is to be down and out. And I guess that's why he's he's such a philanthropist right now. Yeah, I have a lot of stories, but you'd have to be here for another year or so to get them all. Thanks. The foundation dinner has to do with Joe Caprino. You know, Joe Caprino is so much part of uh, the history of the resource center and so much part of uh, what the community she talked has been able to make available for people with disabilities. And just to see so many people showing up, so many people being part of this celebration, I think is just uh, fantastic. It's uh, very thrilling for me, and I'm sure will be rewarding for Joe. So, Joe, congratulations, and we are thrilled uh, to, to be here to honor you. We've, uh, and we, of course, love his son a lot, too. <laughs> Terrific. How did Joe first get involved with the resource center? I think it started with um, his interest in finding some services for Tony, for his son Tony. And then uh, he, uh, of course, became very interested in, in the services and very interested in, in having some influence on, on how the services are organized and presented and helped us out a great deal in the early years, and especially in terms of setting up um, group homes, residences. So it, uh, and he's made so many contributions since then, you know, primarily by his uh, service on the board of directors and it's in the many committees that he's been on and so on. So it's a... It's, uh, it just it's, it's, he was he's been there always. It's, it's 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 been very strange, in fact, since he has not been on the board. It's, it's, you you kind of feel the the absence. So uh, this is a really a nice night. Good Bram, uh, honoring Joe Caprino. Joe and I go back a long time, and that's been a blessing in my life to be have you know share and have opportunities with there. With he and Eric Guggen at one time, they were neighbors and very good friends and. We spend a lot of social time together with our, our operating with the Jamestown baseball team and just those kind of things that were warm and fuzzy. When anything was warm and fuzzy, why Joe Caprina was there to do it and 
you know, he's been an inspiration for not only me, but just hundreds of people in this community. Uh, to, to watch him and to watch what he does and to see what happens, the benefactors in the community for Joe's work and Joe's tender, loving care. And that's why we're here tonight to uh, just to have the honor to be in his company and to see the community say thank you, Joe Caprino. Long, long time uh, worked with you on the Resource Center board for a number of years, but more, than, more importantly, I think uh, I've known you for about 28 years when I called you on, on you at... Uh, Caprino's Complete Home Furnishings. You are the best promoter that Jamestown has ever seen. You made the station a ton of money. We love you. You are the greatest. One, one of the things that, that may not be talked about tonight, so I might as well talk about it now, is the fact that Joe was very good at getting the board together after meetings. Uh, we'd often have these contentious meetings at the board and a lot of differing of opinions, but Joe would invite everybody over to his house afterwards and Mary, his wife, would be very nice at putting out some wonderful spread. Uh, they'd bring out some uh, the libations afterwards and somehow we got all those issues resolved and so, so from about 1980 to 1990 most decisions were made because of the Caprino's uh, kindness of opening up their house afterwards. I mean, there was, there's a lot of interesting issues and a lot of interesting personalities on the board. So Joe was able to meld them all together. Um, any other thing is, uh, you know, it's just on a very personal note, Joe, always willing to, to, to lend something, lend a hand, lend some money, uh, when otherwise nobody else was able to do it. When he believed in the cause, he really just took charge and did it. Uh, and for that, I'll always remember Joe, and I guess that's one of the things that's leading me to giving a little talk tonight. And hopefully you'll get it on later. <laughs> Thanks. You know, Joe and I go back when he first started in business, and the audience will hear tonight that I probably am the only announcer in America, and in the world, that's done more shows at one stores than anybody else. I probably did over a thousand shows for Joe. Does that sound unbelievable? But I have to thank him because he believed in our, in our station and in our show. And I, I, I don't have time to tell you all the crazy promotions he ran. Joe never was at a loss for promotions. In fact, you'll probably hear a lot about it this evening. But uh, I give him credit for ingenuity, creativity. He never rested, and that's why he was successful. But a most lovable, dear man, and we're fortunate to have him. He was a superman, a very great man to work for. And I uh, just enjoyed it very much. And. I don't know what else to say. How many years did you work with him? Uh, between, about 24. 24 years I was a bookkeeper there. And I enjoyed it very much. And he was always very good to me. And everything was very fine. I want to present to you the Resource Center 1996 Legacy of Love honoree, Joseph Caprino. Thank you. You call a cap on. If you, you don't have twenty thousand dollars, take nothing of it. For two <laughs> but for, for two thousand golf course, look out. <laughs> he wants it. <laughs> I want Tyler. Uh, I'm glad you know he's always he's almost a a priest. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, don't, he don't swears. <laughs> but in the golf course, when he, if time misses a shot, there's a jeeper. Jeep. I thought we well, hear a lot of jeepers in our golf course. <laughs> ben Joy is the quietest one. He don't say nothing. When he misses a putt, you see a putt will fall up, up in the air. One time I was stuck on top of the tree. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank everybody so much. And before I for my wife, I want to tell the, the 12th for the next week. It's a 50th anniversary. She put up with me for, for 50 years. <laughs> I don't know what we'll do without the Resource Center. This is my son, Anthony. He's been at the Resource Center for 13 years. And um, he's 48 years old now. Anthony, you say thank you to everybody, Anthony. Am I loud? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.